hello in this video we will prove focal length f is equal to r by 2 in the case of a convex mirror convex mirror ok r radius of curvature f focal length of the convex mirror first let us draw the diagram axis convex mirror this side right side right surface of the mirror is non reflecting left surface of the mirror is reflecting object is kept on the left side of the convex mirror so you should shade the right side in the diagram to show this is non reflecting side this is non reflecting side we will now draw the ray diagram the ray coming from infinity after reflection will appear to diverge from the principal focus this is a ray parallel to the axis and close to it and we have drawn a normal so this is normal this is normal this is incident ray after reflection goes like this the C represents center of curvature incident ray reflected ray angle of incidence angle of reflection they are equal arrows you will have to put so that you indicate they are rays this is incident ray this is incident on the convex mirror so incident ray reflected ray and you indicate the angle of reflection angle of incidence etc this is angle of reflection angle between the reflected ray and the normal this you can consider as a normal because it is a line passing from the center of curvature through the convex mirror so this is normal it's a line from the center of curvature that is normal right okay because it is it happens to be radius so any radius is normal to the surface ok now indicate the other angles this ray is produced backward it will meet at principal focus it appears to come from the principal focus because it is a convex mirror this angle is theta because angle of reflection theta this is vertically opposite angle so that is also theta geometrically angle of incidence is theta here angle of incidence if this is theta this is also theta corresponding angles because you can consider this and this this line you know which is represented by the incident ray and the axis they are parallel and uh, this happens to be the transversal so this is corresponding angle the angle of incidence is theta this angle is also theta corresponding angle this angle is theta also this angle is theta because vertically opposite angle got the point ok so m is of course point of incidence and uh, if this is theta and this is theta this angle will be 2 theta because it is exterior angle to the triangle mfc so this angle plus this angle will give you this angle so 2 theta right and you draw a perpendicular from m to the axis and uh, foot of the perpendicular is d and uh, because of the approximation which we are going to consider theta is very small and all the rays are paraxial rays all the rays which we are going to consider paraxial it means they are close to the axis because of the approximation p and d will almost coincide so wherever you have to write a df you can write pf or wherever d comes you can write p ok right theta is very small right the rays are paraxial d and p almost coincide ok after that 
it's only geometrical analysis tan theta equal to md by pc tan theta so in triangle mdc tan theta opposite by adjacent so md by pc opposite by adjacent but remember that tan theta can be written as theta because theta is small similarly tan 2 theta md by pf angle mdf is there you know sorry triangle mdf is there you know this is 2 theta opposite is md adjacent is bf but it can be written as pf similarly here also tan theta is md by pc actually tan theta is md by dc but d and p co almost coincide so we can write pc okay so md by pc is theta this is small angle approximation md by pf is 2 theta so you multiply this by 2 and equate to this right so 2 times md by pc equal to md by pf 2 times md by pc means 2 theta but that is also equal to md by pf right md cancels so 2 pf is equal to pc on cross multiplying so 2f is equal to r radius of curvature understood that thank you